Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at a clock, and it's when we feel like, feel like at a clock. And you should be getting used to this by now, because we have two of the finest in the land here, and Steel Flyers and Joe Borek again, because this is a regular thing. We just like each other. That's it. And and they're really good, so I'll have them on anytime they want, and they seem to watch it all the time, which is pretty cool. Uh, today we've been doing series on every first round one, whatever we did. Uh, we did the play in series and well, let's just pretend we didn't, but this time though, <laughs> this time we are going to be bang on. This is exactly what's going to happen in the first round right here. At least in this game. Anyways, this is going to be, we're looking at the Philadelphia Flyers and the Montreal Canadians. And, uh, I, it's, I think it's still going to be an exciting series, but let's get into it a little bit. Does Montreal have a chance, Steel Flyers? First of all, thanks for having me on here. Man, you guys are the best, um, and I feel very honored to be here, and it's great talking hockey with you guys anytime, any place, anywhere. I'll be more than happy to sit down and talk hockey with you guys. Um, you got to be following Joe. You got to be following Perlo. These are the best in the land. Um, if you're not following them, you're missing out. Um, so I'll tell you what. <clears throat> uh, we all we all pretty much agree. Uh, we're wearing the Seek and Destroy T-shirt over there. Uh, yeah, baby. So and and today's game day. So we're all a little bit juiced. Um, and if we're not, we're getting there. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, this is to me, and I'm going to, I'm going to quote the article that um, Joe did uh, for, was it pub sports? You did the goalie matchups, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, I think this is the, the biggest key matchup is the goalies in this series. Um, I think it's Carter Hart and I think it's Carey Price. And you have, you have the, the veteran against the, the, the young up and comer, you have the uh, hero and and the boyhood guy who looked up to the hero. You know what I mean? So you got that whole – all those cliches are happening for this game, and it's holding true to form because I, I really feel that Carey Price is going to be really one of the only things that's going to hold um, the Canadians in this series. Um I don't really think it's going to be much of a series. I really feel that Philadelphia outmatches um, the Canadians up and down the roster. I think once you get past the first two lines uh, in in the Canadians uh, on the Canadian side, Philadelphia um, outclasses them all the way up and down. Um, our our fourth line could take on their second line. Um, our third line could take on. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I feel. Um, I'm not taking anything away from what Montreal did. Uh, they came in and they put the whoop down on, on the pens. So uh, uh, I'm not going to take that down from them. You know what I mean? They, they're coming in with some good momentum. But I think this is going to be a, a, a five-game series. I think we might see Carey Price take one, uh, depending on how things go. But Philadelphia has looked really, really, really well. And with everybody kicking on all cylinders, we need to get our power play up and running. Uh, once we get that up and running, I think our, our team is going to become super dangerous. Um, and we need to get some of our big guns on the board. Um, G and Coots need to be on the board a little bit more. Um, but I don't care if the, if the Canadians take out G and Coots. I don't care because we've got so much depth that it doesn't matter. Anybody else on those next couple of lines can score, so I don't really care. I'm calling Flyers in five. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Joe, what are, you, are you in concurrence with all that fine information the Steel Flyers gave us there? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, after today's uh, pressure with AV, I saw Jamie said uh, he thinks these will be the lines and pairings. Um, Fairby, Grant, Knack, JVR, Thompson, Pitlick, Lawts, Hayes, TK, G, Coots, Jake. Uh, with Hart obviously starting, Provy and Niskanen, Sanheim Myers and Hag Braun. So as as Steele was getting at what the I think they're switch up their lines a bit against us, but what they went with last time was actually Byron up top with the no and Lycanen in their last game. Yeah. Yeah. So um it's gonna be interesting 
they're trying to space guys out Montreal because they know they're not that deep. So they're trying to move their talent all around where Arturi Likonen had a very good first round, but he hasn't played to the skill level he really should have yet in his career. So maybe this will be a coming out playoff for him. Hopefully it stops here. Uh, but I think we D him up also better because we have some quicker guys and not guys that are aging like Pittsburgh's a higher ups even got at immediately as the season ended. Rutherford got right to that. We have to get younger but still compete. So the Flyers don't have those issues. No. I think they match up line for line. Other like top lines of Montreal are gonna have to play really well, including their top defensive line, which has now become the one with Petrie and Kulak according to the last game. And then Weber and Sherratt moved down to the second pairing. But Either way, those are the only ways that they're going to – Weber's going to have to play great, but he's not going to play like the Nashville version. He might continue to have a good playoffs, but his, he's going to get taken advantage of because of our speed compared to some of the guys on Pittsburgh that are not as young as they once used to be. They might still be a little quick, but they're not as quick as they used to be. So I think what Steele said is going to benefit us. I also think the defense obviously heftily benefits us. I mean, the Canadian Xavier Quillet is a seventh def- or is like, he's a seventh uh, defenseman really. Um, and he start Yeah. If that, uh, <laughs> so and he started, I was waiting uh, for that. Kulak's on the <laughs> first line and he's a good, nice player, but it's because of how well he's paired with Jeff Petrie and <laughs> Petrie's done with him. That's the reason he's getting so many minutes. Um, yeah. And then Weber and Sherratt, the reason Sherratt's getting a lot of minutes, who's a good defenseman that I like, but he wouldn't be getting that many minutes if, if he wasn't pairing so well with Webb. So Right. They have good chemistry. Yeah. So if if those guys start playing to where they're actually at in this point of their careers, um, and and Sherratt plays more to where he's at skill level-wise, where he had a pretty damn good first series, then the Flyers are way deeper defensively and definitely still deeper on the lines because we didn't even have efficient scoring yet and i think uh, in terms of net front presence from all our lines and i think that was by design i said that in the article i just did that came out right now as a key factors on flyers nitty-gritty uh it's we have line depth and nobody started scoring up top i think it was by design to not showcase everybody in the thing and it was like let's not get play in front of the net much guys let's just surprise everybody when the playoffs start and really piss them off so then we'll play our complete game and it was like where the hell did this go from um so i think that was the whole strategy there i think that was avb and av and just getting with his veteran coaches team and said let's just mind screw with them and just, <laughs> <laughs> AV, has a, AV likes to do that yeah AV is, a mind, AV is a mind playing coach and a damn good one at that especially with the opposition uh, the uh, I'm gonna I'll, I, I'm gonna try to play devil's advocate here. I'm gonna try, but it's very difficult to do. Uh, Montreal. I'm gonna say a few things. First of all, I'm gonna say that kudos to them for picking up Sherrod the way they did at three and a half million dollars a year. He's played way over his contract. Um, he he has turned himself into a top four defenseman. Uh, and and he looks really good. He does really look, look really good. Shea Weber looked good last series. Jeff Petrie looked fantastic. You have got they they had those three defensemen playing as best as they possibly could against Pittsburgh. Um, but after that, I I can't play devil's advocate anymore. I mean, you just mentioned Xavier Roulette. Xavier Roulette. If they it was if they were if he was on the Philadelphia Flyers, he would not be on the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he wouldn't even be close. He'd be sitting. He'd be sitting on the bench. Maybe, maybe he might not even be in the bubble. Like that's seriously how wow. how uh, of, a, of a of a defenseman he is. Uh, Victor Mete coming back from injury. I didn't notice him in the Pittsburgh series at all, which may be a good thing because it means he wasn't making all that many mistakes. But he wasn't right. being what they want. What they asked. What they wanted him to be. They wanted yeah. him to be an offensive guy, and he's turned himself into a small, make the right play type player that kind of barely makes your uh, team's top six. So, yeah. Be, I, and I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm trying to give him as much credit <laughs> yeah. as possible. I would like to see uh, next year what he does because I still think he's a solid defenseman as a third pairing. He just needs yeah. to, you have to see yeah. when guys come back they from played him. They played him too early. But because yeah. Barry Cockin and Yemi played his heart out last, last yeah. uh, mm-hmm. game. And uh, Nick Suzuki is going to be a beast. And at 21 years old, he's already pretty fantastic. 
Yeah. So they have some potential. Some, there is some speed here. You got Max yeah. Domi, Ruan. Max Domi yeah. on the fourth line. Yeah. Um, there is some speed here. They do have some depth. I mean, you could, we're going to have to be careful. We are going to have to be careful. But I agree with uh, Steel Flyers a lot. Man for man, this would be absolutely catastrophic that we would lose the series to this. We team. cannot play down to their level. Let's put it this no. way. I didn't tell my clients to, pit, to bet the Pittsburgh series because I don't like betting series. But I just <laughs> made, I, I'm probably going to tell them to bet this series. <laughs> so, and that's not just me being a homer because I love Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah. It's not. Seriously. Like, but, take, uh, take my fandom away. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, there's nothing. That's what I try to do. Here. Yeah, uh, you you take you. I mean, you take Carter Hart against Carey Price. I personally think he's as good as Carey Price right now. So when gonna, he was that age, we're about no. I, well, no, no, no. Where I, Price is at his career right now, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I think he's at least as good as him now, maybe even better, but at least as good as he is right now. So there's a wash. I'd buy that. And, yeah, I'd buy and that. Once, and once that's a wash, there is no other wash in the lineup. Like yeah, Philadelphia is better all the way around. Even if you look at their, even if you look at putting Shea Weber and the rookie up against our top line, and you look at when we put Provorov and our top line against their top line, I think that's still an outmatch for oh. the Canadians than it is for us. Because even though they still have Shea Weber, our top line whoever it may be, I think it's still going to match overmatch the, their top line because oh. that's how the, and with AV having the last change throughout the entire playoffs, I mean, how sick is that? I'll take that off freaking day. Yeah. I was going to say, um, I think what really stands out in this series too is what Lance uh, kind of said for our site too. He wrote a thing. You can't take them lightly. The flyers have, no, in the past taking teams lightly but i also think that's the um kind of the scheme and the mentality of the team we had back then compared to now so i don't think that's gonna happen now with this veteran coaching staff with terry and who has the defense in lockstep yo perfect. who has everything perfect in point. lockstep uh Vigno, and then you kept lappy which was a great decision because he's the guy that had the relationships with everybody already so yeah that's uh, what's but really that was a great point well for this team. Yeah, I think that's going to continue to make them never have that issue again. I don't think they're going to play down to a team. And we saw that a lot previously. We saw yeah, the Flyers play stage. down to teams. You know what I mean? And if we do that, we're going to lose. That's the only way I think we're going to lose this series is if we play down to Carolina or to to the Canadians. <sighs> Yeah, I, I, do I don't think, think that's, that's going to be the case, but <laughs> can, you go, can you go sweep, uh, Joe, or are you saying five two? Uh, I would say five because I know we talked about it on the one podcast I was on last night. So you never want to predict a sweep. That's like considered to be a thing that you're not supposed to do. Right. Um, so I would say five games. Yeah, Carey Price probably has a chance to take a game. Okay, I don't care if you're not supposed to do it or not. I'm saying sweep. Okay, I I okay. think even the guys at O and O and P I I, I think uh, they they did a uh, their their show I think they even did they didn't do the sweep either I think they said five because it's always remember. a jinx you don't want to yeah get a jinx yeah, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't play that at all yeah just like the uh, just like but I think that don't say shut out nonsense yeah but I yeah. still think that you because look they played us really well during the regular season we were only two and one against them over the regular season and the the one game that we did beat them in was an overtime game yeah that's true okay and the other game we lost to them four to one so we can't yeah. take these guys lightly we can't Look past them. We have to be dialed in, and we have to play at the Flyers' level, not at the Canadians' level. If that's being the case, then good. AV has some juice to make sure they're not taking these guys lightly. Yeah. What I yeah, found yeah. amazing in the last series was that Pittsburgh could have taken them a little more lightly. Actually, when they 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 I playing scared a, a team that's won the cups that they have. 
plain scared is yeah i just can't believe it and i just can't see philadelphia doing that there's just no way i don't know what the reasoning for why they played scared like that except for the fact that they didn't trust their goaltending and i think that is the reason i really don't think they trusted murray and they trusted but we we don't have that we right How, our goaltending all the heck so we're not yeah. going to worry about that kind of stuff Mur mm -hmm. murray's the older one in that group compared to yari right mm-hmm I, yeah. I think they trust Jari more. They should have started Jari. Jari. Uh, that's what I, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll well, tell you what. Full yeah. Well, I was going to say is a funny thing to close out on, oh, though. Oh, okay. I had yeah, a funny yeah, yeah. thing to close out on. The Flyers started messing with the Canes and Bruins just like past teams did. They said, don't do this at Canes and at NHL Bruins. And then they said, glad that's over. Don't get any ideas, Islanders and Capitals. <laughs> oh man that's great that is freaking great man i'll tell you what it's this is going to be uh we we need to be on point with this series we need to take care and we need to just do like the shirt seek and destroy if they play if they play the team like they just want to crush them that's what you want to do and that's what happened with the Edmonton Oilers against Chicago. They did not play that way. Pittsburgh didn't play that way. I, I, like that's what I love about coaches like Tortorella and AV. They don't go out there and say they go out there and say I want you to crush them every minute you are on the ice. I don't give a shit how bad they are. You think they are or whatever. Make them look worse than you think they are. That's what a coach once told me when we went out to play. I like coaches against. like that. Yeah, make them look worse than you think they are. No mercy. Crush, crush, crush. And A.V. and Tortorella are like that. We don't want to just win. We're going to crush you. We're going to crush your spirit. So when we play you again, you're going to hate the fact that you'll that remember. That's right. <laughs> anyway, I think that's a good thing to finish on. Uh, I, I've been uh, pro of wisdom and I'm at BPAL picks. I just told you about my clients. We go over there and make a lot of money and have a lot of frolic. You might want to check it out. I'll put it in the comment section. Um, Steel Flyers also has a wonderful website that he's just put together. Uh, I love it. I sh I'll put that in the comment section too. What the heck? And uh, you tell them all about it, Steel. Yeah, man. www.steelflyers.com. One stop shop. Come and get it. all your Steel Flyers podcasts. Check out all these guys right here because their links to all their stuff is on the website. You can check out all their latest videos, all their latest uh, frolics, and all their latest article articles. Um, yeah, one stop shop. Come check it out. www.steelflyers.com. And Joe. Your, your your writing expertise. What are we doing with that? Yeah, man. Uh, overtime heroics and pub sports radio is hockey and baseball. Flyers nitty gritty is obviously the Flyers, and then um, yeah, that's most of it for writing. And then I do the Chasing the Pennant podcast, and now also do some with the Disciples of Ed, obviously named after the great Ed Schneider, um, for the Always Next Year podcast group. And then Sports Fanatic News YouTube. So, yeah, it keeps me busy. But we love staying busy in these times with all the sports all day, every day, especially since the hockey's keeping me away from our future baseball team in this town. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point, too, yeah. man. You know. <laughs> Thanks right, for having me, bro. It's been a blast. We're going to be together again, and we're going to bring in another video right away. Be on the edge of your seats. Hit the subscribe and the bell to keep this all just keep this flowing. Keep this going in the Don't algorithm. be afraid to comment. Let us know what you think. Absolutely. If you think we're wrong about this, I'd be surprised. But if you do, we want to hear about it. Have a great day. Enjoy Talk the hockey. Absolutely.